Plinko. Um, so I recently came up with this, and, it, and uh, it's inspired by Nikolai, one of his uh, one-handed uh, cuts. And uh, I'm really fascinated by the flow of this uh, one-handed cut because you can really play around with the movement of it. And uh, that's really what has made me practice it this much um, lately. So yeah, let's just get into the explanation. To do Plinko, you want to re-grip the deck from a uh, dealer's grip position here up into this position where it is held between your pinky and your thumb in this sort of a vertical um, way and uh, the deck will be pretty far in on your pinky, on like the middle joint here. Uh, and then you break off one third of the deck with your thumb um, and let it fall down into um, your three fingers here and then you're gonna extend your index finger and your middle finger and then you're gonna place them on this short edge here um, and then break off half of the remaining cards um, with your thumb here and then um, you have three packets separated by your middle finger and then you're gonna extend your thumb up and as you do that you want to extend your index finger out here and then let this packet fall in between these uh, three fingers in uh, like a straddle grip here and this packet is just sort of underneath getting pushed along and then you want to push it all the way to this position rotating these packets all the way into this position um, where you're actually holding it uh, in a uh, scissor cut here between your um, pinky or no not your pinky your index finger and your thumb and then you're gonna release this packet down here into your hand and then extend this scissor cut packet out and let this packet fall all the way down to your pinky and then do a scissor cut and then just close the scissor cut all the way and then this packet is gonna fall all the way to your um, index finger here and then you want to do this cut, but I like to add a bit of style to it by uh, moving my hand this way first and then opening up. And then when you close it, you rotate your hand back like so. And uh, one of the uh, important things to remember uh, in Plinko is to keep, it, um, keep the flow pretty consistent. So first you move this way and then you move the other way and then back this way again and then you move over here and here so it kind of goes back and forth like that and um, that's pretty important to uh, to remember when doing Plinko so yeah that is uh, that's it one of the uh, problems you'll most likely run into is um, keeping all of the packets square can be quite a challenge especially right here when you drop this packet down here and as you can see um, some of the cards are sort of uneven, but if you just continue the flourish all of the uh, the cards will square together and you won't have any trouble So don't think too much about that middle part and getting every card perfect Of course, you'll try and keep everything as square as possible, but uh, it's sort of a self-working flourish in that way
Orakai. The concept of having intertwined fingers uh, as a part of a flourish is very unique to me and Ora actually means uh, pray in Latin. So let's learn Ora Cut. To do Ora Cut, there's actually two ways to get into it. Um, the first one, you just perform a regular scissor cut. And when you're extending your fingers like this, you're able to place the other hand in here and actually intertwine your fingers. Now you want to make sure that this pinky goes on top of the other pinky. So you're intertwining your fingers like that. And now you can uh, grip this packet up here between the index finger and thumb with the other thumb and the middle finger down here. When you've done that, you can just uh, place your thumb in here and let this packet fall into a kind of straddle grip once again. So now you're in a pretty complex position. Your fingers are, are intertwined and you have a packet on the back of uh, both hands. Now you can extend your fingers, and I usually just use the uh, middle and ring finger of each hand to keep those packets there. So you do the display, and now this thumb, my right, probably your left, is going all the way down here and gripping the side of this packet, the joker packet down here. And at the same time, you put your thumb on the other packet, the Queen of Spades, in this case. And now you are able to grip this packet between the middle finger and thumb, and the other packet between the ring finger and thumb. And then you can just slowly move your finger fingers out. just do whatever you like from here. It's kind of like uh, Six Agoon. You can get into something afterwards or you can just do the flourish on its own. So that is Aura Cut. So the second way to get into Aura Cut, you just split the deck in two. You could maybe even do uh, Six Agoon, but you have two equal packets and then you uh, position this, uh, my left hand, probably your right hand, this packet um, you grip like so between the uh, the palm here and the uh, thumb. So when you've done that, you can position the the other packet like this, kind of as if you're doing a uh, opening up a scissor cut or whatever. And then you can just you pretty easily intertwine your fingers and re-grip this packet so that both of them are in a straddle grip on the back of the hands. So that's the other way to do Oracut.
racket cut. This is a pretty old, uh, very simple one-handed cut. Um, I remember when I created it, I came up with a lot of small variations, but I uh, ended up keeping the most simple one. Um, it's a very addictive move, and uh, let's just get into the explanation. To do bracket cut, you want to just have it in deal script and then open up for a uh, Shalia cut, and then reposition your thumb to the edge here, to the short edge, getting into this position um, where the top packet is being held between your pinky and your thumb. Um, and then you want to lift this packet up on top of this one. And the way that you're going to do that is by extending your uh, middle finger as you push down and curl in your index finger. And it's going to look like this. This is a pretty knacky grip. Um, but you'll, uh, you'll get it if you just practice it a bit. Um, it's very important to push it, uh, put a lot of pressure um, with your index finger on the packet, pushing it all the way up and above the, uh, the, the top packet in the beginning here, the uh, five of spades packet in my case. Um, so yeah, you, you wanna do this, this uh, grip here, um, pushing this packet up and then Move your thumb underneath this packet and then let the top packet slide on your thumb's nail so that there are no cards uh, getting stuck anywhere. And then just close the two packets together like so. Prince Charming. Uh, I love this and it's probably my, uh, it's one of my proudest creations. Uh, this concept is very useful for a lot of things. The whole um, uh, concept of having a card rotate on the thumb and on the deck itself is very useful for a lot of things. And I'm going to show you some of uh, my ideas towards the end. But right now let's uh, learn Prince Charming. Now to do Prince Charming, it's really good to have dry hands. That'll make the card, uh, that'll make it easier to spin the card on the thumb here. And then also uh, make sure that you're in a straddle grip. So the pinky is down here. Now you wanna press down on this corner, separating the top card from the rest of the deck. And then you're actually gonna tilt your hand down a bit, not too much. And then press down even more with the thumb and that'll actually make the card rotate uh, on the corner of the, the deck and your thumb. So it's out here. And now an important uh, tip is to actually, as soon as the card is starting to rotate, you are going to curl in your thumb just a little bit like that. That'll make the spin itself faster. Now as when you've done the spin itself, you are going to move your thumb down here to the opposite corner. And as you do that, the card will just become flush with the rest of the deck. I'll do it again. And that's pretty much uh, Prince Charming. Now, something else I should mention is you can also add some uh, wrist movement or you can even use your, uh, the whole arm to add some style or some speed to the flourish itself because it can look a bit boring to just do Prince Charming on its own. So yeah, experiment with it and uh, you can obviously use this for a lot of stuff. You can um, do some uh, card twirls in the other hand or whatever you like. 
and that is Prince Charming. Now the Prince Charming uh, concept is very versatile and you can even do it from a biddle grip in the other hand like so. If you push down here you can spin the card on the index finger and corner instead of the thumb and corner and then return it. Kind of similar to Kevin's one-handed flirt. Now you can also do it on the bottom of the deck but that is a bit more tricky. I haven't even mastered that myself yet but you can uh, push out a card like this and use the thumb to rotate it as well. I sort of created these unknowingly. Um, I just sort of played around with the Erdnase grip and then I came up with them. Uh, I just used to do them in like a single cut and not continuously. And then uh, Zach, Zach Mueller, um, I'm sure you know of him, uh, he said that they looked really cool and I just sort of uh, played around with the idea and uh, I put them in, my, uh, in the video Villain. Um, so yeah, that was the first time that they appeared on YouTube. Uh, so yeah, let's just get into the explanation. To do V-cuts, you want to um, go into an Erdnase grip, which is the figure th uh, 52 in the expert at the card table. Uh, so yeah, you can just learn it from there. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. You go like this, and then you break the deck in half, well not actually in half, just a smaller packet down here and then you extend that packet out like so and bring your middle finger to the short edge here and then push down with your thumb which can be quite a stretch but you're actually gonna push all the way down so that your middle finger can get in between these two packets and here, um, from here, you're just gonna lift half or just a, a, uh, a part of this packet up with your thumb. And then your ring finger here is gonna extend or push this packet into place with the other um, packet out here. And then you're just gonna push down again, split the deck and then Sort of extend your fingers and maneuver that packet into place. And then once you've done that a couple of times you're just gonna uh, do it with the last packet like so without lifting up any cards so just going like this. And then to close it um, you're just gonna remove your middle finger from the short edge and let the packet fall down into a dealer's grip. One way that you can co combine all three of uh, my flourishes is to go like so into a, um, a bracket position and then you can actually do a uh, V-cut and then do the rest of the bracket cut and then just close everything together like this and then do the end of Klingo and that looks pretty cool. You can also do um, flat iron uh, from this position which you can find in collection 3 and I do that quite a lot and it looks pretty cool so yeah some people complain that these uh, that V cuts are too difficult but actually if you can hold a packet in between your pinky and your uh, middle finger here you you'll be able to do them you'll just have to get the uh, the, uh, the stretch just right 
and uh, it won't be that difficult if you're able to hold a, uh, a packet between these two fingers. Sigsagoon. I created this flourish uh, a long time ago and it's actually uh, one of the first flourishes I created. Um, it's really good for uh, splitting the deck in two and I usually do this before I get uh, into L cuts for any other combo. So uh, let's take a look at uh, Sigsagoon. So to do Sigsagoon you want to start off by breaking the deck in, uh, in two equal halves, because if you make sure that they're equal, you will end up with uh, two equal packets in uh, each hand at the end. Uh, and then you just do a regular swing cut, like so. And then you do another one, but this time you're placing it like this. So you actually rest, it's actually, this packet is resting on the ring finger, like so. And then you want to perform this one-handed cut. It's kind of similar to a scissor cut uh, and I'm sure you're familiar with, uh, with this concept. Now in the other hand you're gonna reposition uh, your fingers. You start off by getting into a straddle grip like so because then you your thumb is able to move up here to this corner and the middle finger is going to move to this corner. So now you're in a uh, molecule uh, kind of grip in each corner. And as you do this one-handed cut over here, you want to rotate this packet out, like so, and then a little bit back so that it's kind of flat. Um, and then you've, as you've performed this one-handed cut, you want to keep uh, Keep holding the packets like so, and then you're actually just gonna place this packet into the other hand, into kind of a straddle grip. And if you push down with this, uh, with this middle finger, it will make the other packet spin like that. And when you've done that, this Jack of Clubs packet is actually in perfect position to just be placed on the top over here and now you've split the deck in two and then you can just go into L cuts or you can do Prince Charming in both hands or you can do some Plingo V cuts whatever you like and that is uh, Six Sagoon. Now an, an important uh, part of this flourish is that when you are right around here instead of just rotating this packet all the way out and then placing this packet underneath. The whole concept of this flourish is actually to use a packet um, to rotate another packet. So you really want to make sure that you get it back a little bit, spin it back a little bit and then press down so that this packet rotates. 